Gentlemen, good to see you both. Appreciate your time today. David, we're going to hear from the White House at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, further remarks, maybe some clarity, additional clarity on the path of sanctions. Is the number one concern right now uh, potential disruption to the energy markets and what that might do to global inflation and confidence? No, I think the number one concern is that Putin's going to go further and, uh, you know, fully invade all of Ukraine, uh, including uh, trying to take over Kyiv. Um, if you had that sort of situation, yes, it has a huge impact on energy markets, but that is a, of a scale different than what's happened so far. I mean, what's happened so far is a, a somewhat predictable tit for tat. And while, you know, while it's, you know, it's, it's terrible that, that, that Putin is, is uh, invading or annexing essentially part of Eastern Ukraine. It doesn't change the geopolitical situation that much. It doesn't change the economic situation that much. But if something happened which really forced the Europeans not just to, you know, stop, uh, you know, to pick up in terms of sanctions, but actually to refuse to buy Russian oil or gas uh, or something switched off those taps, that would be a much more serious situation. But it, it, the, the key point here is not what's going on right now in energy markets. The key point is what does Putin do next? Conrad, that is, that is the thinking among many, that his credibility is on the line, uh, the depth of his speech, the idea that he wants to reset the post-Cold War order. Uh, is that where you are? Is that where you think we're going? I mean, that's a difficult geopolitical question. I think there's so many experts uh, trying to opine on what's in, um, in Mr. Putin's head. Um, I, I think if I think of it logically, it does not make sense for a full invasion of Ukraine. Um, I, I, the, the two uh, regions were already under Russian control, in effect. Um, I think what happens next is important to see. The sanctions that have been coming through uh, uh, seem somewhat measured. Um, and, and overall, I think what it means is for, for markets, um, uh, I think the energy issue is one that I do worry about for broader emerging markets where uh, it's driven by importing energy and that's an inflationary threat to it. But for right now, I think it's uh, all fundamentals are off and it's about um, what Mr. Putin does next and how aggressive he is in, into uh, getting into Ukraine. And what Putin does next. But in the meantime, we are and our allies are leveling sanctions against Russia right now. What does all of this do to the U.S. dollar and what is the read through to investments? I think if, th if things stop here or if we sort of reach this sort of tentative equilibrium here, then I don't expect to see a significant rally in the U.S. dollar or a significant decline in rates. I think the Fed would stay on its current track and you'd have this, these sanctions, which of course hurt Russia to some extent. Uh, and certainly her, uh, Russia has hurt his reputation tremendously in the last few months. But I, d I don't think it caused a big rally to safe assets. But if Russian tanks move in from the north and head for Kyiv, then I think you would see a significant rally in the U.S. dollar, rally in U.S. treasuries. I think you would quite possibly see the Federal Reserve back away from um, aggressive tightening. So I think it could quite significantly change the short-term economic environment until we reach some new equilibrium. Uh, gentlemen, we're going to I hope you'll forgive us uh, keeping it a bit tight today, given the flow of news. But it's good to see you. Appreciate your guidance, uh, Conrad and David. We'll, we'll see you next time. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.